How's it going guys? Hello everyone. Today I'm going to run through some AutoCAD tips that I wish I knew when I started in architecture. AutoCAD looks like a pretty intense program but I promise you it's not. I'm going to show you a few tips that are going to save you tons of time and if I knew them at the start of my degree I would have saved honestly hours. So this first tip, I didn't even know about this until about two years ago, I've been doing this all wrong. So when you go ahead and click new project, you see this template window come up with all these options, but this is actually the most important button click you're gonna make in your whole drawing. So what these are templates that set things like units and plot style for your drawing. And once these are set, it's very difficult to change later. So if you're basically in any country other than America, you wanna be using metric, you wanna be using ACAD ISO. Now what that has is metric units, as in millimeters, meters, kilometers, etc. And And if you're if you're in America or one of the countries in the world using Imperial, you want to be using ACAD.DWT. Now make sure you use the right one at the start of your drawing. Now if you're watching this video now and you're thinking to yourself, what units am I using right now? You can't really tell. It's not really clear anywhere in the AutoCAD window. So what you can do is type in the command measurement, push enter, and this will tell you a measurement value. If you see a value of zero, that means you're using Imperial. If you see a value of one, that means you're using metric. So the second thing we're going to run through is using blocks and what you should be using blocks for is anything that you draw repeatedly and that you'd like to keep consistent. So the way you can create a block is draw the object that you'd like to turn into a block, select it, type the command block, push enter, you'll get the block definition window, give the block a name and you want to have the base point set to specify on screen because we want to select that, make sure the millimeters are correct and leave all of this other stuff. Click OK pick a point that makes sense to you. This is where the block will be placed when you click. So just click and now that block is done. If you want to edit the block, just simply right click and click block editor, or you can edit the block in place. Now, because the lines that we used to create our block were drawn originally on another layer, they were drawn on the wall framing layer, you can see they're red. So if we go and change the layer of this block to a different layer, you can see the color of the lines don't change and it's going to plot incorrectly for that layer. Now that's because the line work inside the block is on the wrong layer. Now if you would like your block to change color based on the layer that it's on, the way to do that is to go into the block editor and make sure all the line work inside your block is on layer zero and set to by layer. So then close the block editor, save the changes. Now you can see because the line work inside the block is on layer zero, what it will do is when you change the layer of the block, color and line properties of that will follow the layer. And now to illustrate the benefits of a block if you had a series of this same block throughout your whole drawing and you suddenly realized that you actually wanted to change that you could just edit the block save changes and that would update all the blocks in the drawing as you can see and that's why blocks are so powerful and so important this next tip is going to save you tons of time let's say you wanted to go through and select all of this insulation here because you wanted to copy it over to another drawing you could go through and click on literally every single piece of insulation which is going to take you ages a much quicker way to do this is just drag a selection box around all of the insulation obviously you're capturing a lot of objects that you don't want but you can filter your selection so if you open the properties tab if you don't have that open just type the command properties and it will open click on this little button here called quick select and what you can do is go through and set a selection filter so what we actually want to do is select all of the objects on the layer insulation because that's where it is so make sure it's set to current selection and we're going to go to layer equals we want it to be insulation and make sure it's set to include in new selection set click ok and as you can see that's isolated out all of the insulation on its own now have a look through this tool there's all types of different ways in which you can filter your selection based on object type color layer value everything like that you can even remove things from selection so it's a really powerful tool and it will seriously save you tons of time and now another bonus tip let's say you've just done a command like that you've selected out the things you'd like to do you've copied them you've moved them into somewhere in a drawing and now you've realized you've actually moved them incorrectly there's no way to quickly select these you're gonna have to go through and drag them all or use a quick filter but what you can do is use the select previous command so type select type previous or prev enter push enter again and now you've selected the objects that were most recently selected. Knowing about this command has saved my life so many times. This tip is about how to isolate objects. It's really helpful for when you want to just simplify out your drawing and work on a specific area of your drawing without being cluttered by the whole rest of the drawing. So what you can do is make your selection, type isolate, push enter, and that will isolate out the objects. You can go through and work on this as you like. And then what you can do is type unisolate, push enter, and you'll go back to your original drawing. Now this also works for hiding objects. Let's say you want to draw some things that are actually underneath this part of the drawing, and this part of the drawing is just clogging up your view. You can just type hide objects or hide, push enter, that object will be hidden and then type unhide push enter and the objects will come back 
This is a command that I only learned about recently and it's just something to keep in the back of your mind for when you really need it because when you need it, you really need it. So let's say you're going about drawing and then you zoom back out in your drawing and realize that you've deleted something and you think the only way to get that back is to push control Z a bunch of times until it comes back. Then you've got to go back and redraw everything that you just undid. Now there's actually another way to do that. There's just a single command that will help you with this. What you do is just type oops OOPS, push enter, and that will bring back the most recently deleted item. Now that's seriously helpful because it will save you tons of time and let's be real, it happens more often than we'd like to admit. One of the issues with AutoCAD straight out of the box that you can fix quite easily is when you go to plot something, it will look something like this. With all the line weights set, all the thicknesses and layers, and you can tell the hierarchy of line weights used in the drawing. You can normally only tell this once you've plotted your drawing. When you go into paper space, you might see something like this. You've got your dark background, got all your different layer colors showing, the lines are all the same thickness, and you can't really tell what it's gonna look like plotted. So you have to plot, go through the whole plot process, and then look at the PDF to see if your line weights are correct or if they're displayed playing properly in a PDF. Now there's a way that you can actually preview your drawing in paper space as if it's being printed. First, we wanna set the background of the paper space to white. Yours might already be white, but if it's not, just go up to the top, go to options, go to display, click on colors, go to sheet or layout, you interface element uniform background and change this to white. Click apply and close. So now you can see it's white, but as you can see, the layer colors are still displaying and we don't want that. So what you wanna do is go down to the paper space tab at the bottom of your window, go to page setup manager, or you can just type page setup and now you want to edit the page that you're looking at go to modify and up the top right corner of the dialog box you'll see display plot styles click ok now you can see everything is in the correct color and it's all black or gray but there's no line weight showing there's actually a toggle for line weight display and you can go down to the hamburger icon in the bottom right of your window look for line weight tick that to show that at the bottom of your screen and then it's this little icon here just click that and you can see now the line weights are actually showing as if they were plotted and this is really helpful for when you look at your drawing in paper space you can tell already that the line weight are as if they've been plotted it's a good way to get an idea of if your drawing is starting to look how you want and get a kind of hierarchy going thanks for watching i appreciate it and i'd love to hear your feedback or any comments or requests for future videos down below i make sure to reply and if you have any issues with anything architecture design work related especially if you're a uni student flick me an email I reply to all of them at this point so and I'd love to hear from you so thanks again